I walk into a networking event, it doesn't matter what it is, and I scour the room, I think that's the right word, you know, I go like, look through, see if I know anyone, and I go up and I find someone that I know, and I kind of just skimmy my way into the conversation. Why? Because it's taking someone else and allowing them to maybe introduce me to someone else or just say something about it. But then what I do next is something that many of you may think is wild. I don't really like to ask questions when I meet someone for the first time like, hi, what do you do? Why? Because that's what everyone does. I went to a networking event this morning. I wore my Ninja Turtle sh uh, shirt. I'm wearing, I'm colorblind, so some color shorts because I can. Here's the thing though. When you meet someone for the first time, you probably should not be asking them, hey, what do you do? Instead, if you wanna create a long and meaningful relationship, try and figure out something about that person that has nothing to do with the thing that they're probably there for. The reason I think this is a good strategy is because you want to be memorable, right? And by the way, everyone who ever listens to this message will not implement this strategy because they'll go and do what everyone else does. And remember, if you wanna be the anomaly, you have to do things that are different than everyone else. And so if I would have gone up to this, and I didn't do this, right? But if I would have gone to this networking event and I would have met everyone there, I guarantee you 90% of the people would have asked me the same question. So Zach, what do you do? What is Hatch? Or something like that. And then every conversation is the exact same over and over and over again. When in fact, when I look back on the conversations that I do have at events like this, the best ones have nothing to do with what pays the bills basically. Why? Because I'm creating long and meaningful relationships with people. So this morning, some of my favorite conversations were about hmm, things like Florida and cruises and nothing to do with business sports, right? My favorite restaurant or one of my favorite restaurants, Dirty Buffalo. Why? Because I'm trying to create meaningful relationships with people. Now, listen, I get it. You're like, well, I'm there to make money. You're right. But when was the last time that you bought from someone on the first time that you met them? I'm waiting because the answer is still probably zero. Yes, I understand I talk about things like this all the time. It's important to talk about and create relationships with people because guess what? By the time you're ready to sell them, days later, weeks later, years later, or maybe even hours later, minutes later, whatever it might be, you have created this relationship with them and people are more likely to buy from people that they like. And that's important. So, you know, there's a ton of different ways to take these conversations and do different things with them. But I think the most important thing is to think about, okay, what are the questions that you are bombarded with over and over again and that you really can't stand? I think it's always great to just look at the things that, the scenarios that you can't stand, that you don't like, and just do the exact opposite of that. Right. So like, I don't really like to talk about business. Now, sometimes people are like, what are you working on now? And maybe I tell them, right. Usually I tell them I'm working on a book right now. Right. Or I have a book in the works. Right. And that's, that's usually what I tell them. By the way, we're close. Editor gave me a date. Uh, and then, uh, with the publisher, we're having a phone call on Monday to talk about getting the actual date in the bookstores. Woo. Which I still don't know when that date is, but getting closer, but if you think about it, by creating these relationships with people around the conversations that seem to get them engaged, they're more likely to engage with you later. And then you can always go up to them and be like, oh, you're the cruise person. Oh, you're the Tampa Bay person. Oh, you're the uh, whatever person. And then you have a direct connection with them. And you do it. So how do you do this? So there's a couple of different ways that I would do this. Basically, um, start conversations around like, what's something that you're really excited about right now? What vacation are you going on soon? Like, 
What, like, and don't bring up, like, oh, how was the weather last night? That's so cheesy. What do you do? What was the weather last night? That's what everyone does. Oh, the weather was great. Oh, what do you do? Like, it's boring. What are you watching on Netflix? That's that's one that I, I did not talk about today, but I like to talk about. Like, what are you watching on Netflix? Because when you hear what someone is probably watching on Netflix, guess what? You probably can talk about that thing. If they're watching it and they're telling you about it, they probably enjoy it. So then you can go, huh. I'm creating a positive interaction with this person so that they're happy to be around me. So where are you vacationing? Where did you vacation last? What's something not work related that you're super excited about? Stuff like that, right? These people talk about work 24-7, right? And they're going to sit there and be like, whoa, this is weird. Like this person isn't asking me the same questions everyone else. We, I, we talked, uh, I talked with the guy today about a closed brewery, right? All these different things. Right? And they're important because they create meaningful and lasting relationships that are far more than the five or six minutes that you're going to have at a networking event. And so think about that. If you can create a meaningful relationship with someone that has nothing to do with business at a networking event, that relationship, and then, you know, you follow up and create a real relationship with that person. As years go by, you're a decade later and you're like, damn, that conversation started because I just asked them what they love what they're watching on Netflix, and it goes a long way. I know it seems crazy, but I'm also the author of a book called Anomaly, which means you have to do things that are absolutely ridiculous, like have a championship belt behind you, which I just realized it's really kind of hard to see. I need to change that. Maybe I'll make it hang down. That's what I should do. Anyway, I promise you, if you follow this strategy and you act different than everyone else, guess what's going to happen? You will get better results. I want to hear what some of your icebreakers are. So in the comments or wherever you're listening or email me, I want to know what some of your icebreakers are. And also, what are, the, what are some of the scenarios that you can't stand being put into at networking events specifically related to how people approach you? Hi, what do you do is not a great way to do it. Peace.